In this unit, we started with some basic terms. Density is mass per volume. Pressure is defined as force per unit area. So the unit for pressure is newtons per meter squared because it's force divided by area. And the special name is Pascals. For fluid, it exerts pressure in all directions. So if I put my hand in air, I get pressure on the hand from all directions from the air. For fluids at rest, we have these special things. At any point, the pressure is the same in all directions. And the force due to fluid pressure is always perpendicular to the contact surface. So if I have this container holding water, then the force from water pressure on this contact surface will be perpendicular to the surface, perpendicular to the surface. And the pressure produced by a fluid at rest is rho gh, the density times g times the depth. So if I, we can use the rho gh to find the pressure right over here produced by this fluid. We have then problems like this uh, with a u-shaped tube that's filled with water and oil. When this is balanced, the pressure over here and there are the same. So P1 and P2 are equal. And the pressure over here is the pressure on the top, that's the atmospheric pressure, plus the rho GH of the oil. And the P2 over here would be also atmospheric pressure plus the rho GH of the water. And of course, the, rho, the atmospheric pressure would cancel on both sides. So it's the rho GH on that side equals to this. We also use millimeter mercury, centimeter mercury, or meter mercury as unit for pressure. What this means is that this is the pressure equivalent to a 600 millimeter tall mercury column. Because this is the pressure produced by a mercury column, this is the rho GH of the mercury. So we would have to do the rho, the density of the mercury, times the G, times the height of the mercury column. Since the column is 600 millimeter mercury, uh, 600 millimeters tall, that means the height in standard unit will be 0.6 meters. So this will give us uh, the pressure in Pascals. If we use all standard unit, that means uh, the density of the mercury is 13,600. We, you do not have to memorize this. Then the G is 10, or we round it to 10. And this many pascals would equal to 600 millimeter mercury. For a barometer, we would have a tub filled with a fluid and a glass tube filled with the fluid. And then we cover the top and then flip it over and put it in this uh, tub. If the tube is long enough, then this fluid will go down because of gravity and uh, leave this uh, vacuum on the top. When the fluid stops going down, when it's balanced, the pressure here and the pressure out here must be the same. So this pressure out here, which is the atmospheric pressure, would equal to the pressure over here, which is the pressure of the vacuum, plus the rho GH of this column of fluid. And of course, the pressure of the vacuum is zero. And then this pressure from this column of fluid is rho GH, and this equals to PO. That's why this is a barometer, because the rho GH of this fluid column measures the atmospheric pressure. A manometer is what we use to measure the pressure inside containers. Classic manometers are like this U-shaped tube with uh, usually mercury inside. When it is balanced, the pressure here and there are the same. The pressure over here would be the pressure inside the container, P1. The pressure over here would be the pressure from the outside, the atmospheric pressure plus the rho GH. So P1 equals to PO plus rho GH. If the mercury column look like this, that means P1 must be higher than PO. That's why the mercury column gets pushed down more on this side. And this here, when it's balanced, these two pressures are the same. And over here, the pressure is the pressure inside the container, P2. Over here, that's atmospheric pressure. Because the pressure here and there are the same, that means uh, the pressure here 
P2 plus the rho GH would equal to the pressure here, PO. If the, at, if the mercury column look like this, that means the atmospheric pressure is stronger than P2. And if it is mercury inside the container, and let's say H equals to 5 centimeters, that means uh, P1 must equal to, since P1 is higher than PO, and uh, it is a 5 centimeter mercury higher. If PO is the standard 76 centimeter mercury, then P1 would be 76 plus 5, which is uh, 81 centimeter mercury. So it's convenient for us to use centimeter mercury if we have gauges that has uh, mercury inside. Now let's see, P2 is less than PO by how much? By 5 centimeter mercury. So P2 is 76 minus 5, which is 71 centimeter mercury. The pressure we found here are absolute pressure. The real pressure is the absolute pressure. There's another thing that's called gauge pressure. And the gauge pressure is defined as the absolute pressure, the real pressure, minus the atmospheric pressure. So the gauge pressure is how much higher the pressure is than the atmospheric pressure, which means for P1, the gauge pressure would be 5, because it is 5 centimeter mercury higher than the atmospheric pressure. And since P2 is actually lower than the atmospheric pressure, that means P2 in gauge pressure, it will be negative 5 centimeter mercury. We talked about Pascal's principle. Pascal's principle says that, that an external pressure applied to a confined fluid is transmitted undiminished throughout the entire fluid. Pascal's principle is the idea behind the hydraulic lifts. Let's say we have a small piston on this side and large piston on that side. We would usually put the heavy weight on the large piston side and then push on this side to lift this heavy weight. Because the extra pressure applied is undiminished, that means the pressure on this side, uh, the pressure on this side equals the pressure on that side. So P1 equals to P2, and the pressure is force divided by area. So the force divided by area is the same on the two sides. That means if the diameter of the pistons is 1 to 5, that means the area is 1 to 25. That means the force must also be 1 to 25, because 1 divided by 1 equals to 25 divided by 25. So that means we only have to use 1 25th of the force to lift a heavy object. That means we can use this to save force. However, if we use 1 25th of the force to lift the object, that means that we have to travel 25 times the distance just to lift the object a little bit. So 25 distance, uh, say 25 centimeters down, the object gets lifted by one centimeter because uh, work equals to force times the displacement times the cosine. We can never save work. So if we get to save force, the distance must be longer. So these two multiplied together must equal to 1 because we cannot save work.